the people is the people get too wrapped up in isms and cults and trickery. You know, mm. I'm going to tell everybody now, Black Lives Matter is did as much good, right, as dole cards. You're still unemployed. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official Com. You need the television app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Nice check. My mic sound nice, Jeff. Too. Killer Kill, over to you. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Kill podcast live and direct, central London, or as central as you could be, should be a wannabe, all right? Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk and everybody that's got the television app, that download business, this is what we're doing for your so. weekdays, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it goes without saying, this gentleman has got a legacy longer than the rest of us, trust me. In the UK, he is premier, not only in the music, but in the TV, from everything from soap operas to children's programs to the legendary Red Dwarf to the original first-generation DJs that set up camp and called it fucking hip-hop over here. Yes, Danny John Jules inside the place. In my day, it was still called rap, baby. <laughs> Hip-hop came later. And a very dear friend. Good company as well, my brother. How are you? I'm really good, man. I just thought, you know, today, <laughs> before I got into the madness of work and all that, <laughs> yeah. and you've been asking me to do this thing. So, you know, thing is, I'm a man of my word. You are indeed. And I didn't want to sort of go away and not, you know, do what I said I was going to do. So here I am. I had to sneak in. I didn't want no one to recognise me. Yeah, for those of you who are listening and not watching, Danny is currently donning a very incognito, low-key, lower than low-key, you'll have to zoom in to see outfit. Yeah, it's like that. It's like that gospel singer, my name, Niam. Go on. Um, what's the, the guy that, uh, you, what? you know him, Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, what's, what's his name? Oh, I can't remember his name. That's it. Everyone, you know, yeah. everyone kind of just says, oh, the balaclava guy. Balaclava. Where's the balaclava thing about? What is it? I don't know. That's why I thought, you know, hey, <laughs> nobody can't complain about this. Don't say shit. Can't say shit about this. Yeah. This is, I mean, it's 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 like a it's like a, a beard nappy. It is, isn't it? I don't get it. Or, or I don't know. What's the name of the musician? Comment below. You know what the deal is. You know what the deal is. And again, just to emphasize some of the lineages going on right now. That on this table right now, this is the A to Z, pretty much of of street culture. Let's be honest with you. I mean, I yeah. know I, we all know you from all these. You know. You can't walk down the road without people knowing who Danny is. But 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 the, the the bits I'm interested in are the bits that people don't know. Well, I can put it in a nutshell, really. It, okay, so if you come, like, from the one that really <laughs> put it across the line into the whole Preach, stratosphere. tell them. Yeah? The chronic, right? And the whole parliament... D D D ra ta ta all it was that was the beat that took it worldwide. People wide. sleep on funk all of a sudden, don't they? Well, yeah, because no, but you got to remember, you know, uh, 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 Dre utilized that sound, you know, way back in the early days of N.W.A. Mm. Because you see, the first time around mm. when Parliament actually were doing it themselves. Mm. I was there at the Hammersmith Odeon when George Clinton came down in a spaceship. The spaceship came with the smoke in it? If you hear any noise, it's just me and the boys Ooh. in there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get in the bed. <laughs> I was, oh, dancing, I for, I'd seen I was that dancing for that for real. Let me tell you, I was standing... How old were you? How old were you at that time? 17. 17. And I'm at the House of Virgin, and there's a spaceship landing on the stage. And he comes out, <laughs> he's in a white fur coat to the floor, silver high-heeled boots, the star glasses, the hair down, the white hat, you know, and he comes down the stairs, uh, and people are like, uh? And um, 
next thing, you know, the whole back, there was, must have been 25 people All on stage. All on stage, 25 people. The Brides it, it of Dr. Dr. Funkenstein. Was Bootsy pe- there? Bootsy there? Uh, inflatable cars, giant flat. When he does flashlight, he comes on with a big flashlight. Flashlight. Oh. Da dun da dun da dun da dun We got a light. Da dun da dun So once you've experienced that, you know, because you got to remember, we was we was we were soul boys. You know, there was no such really thing as hip hop in in our um, in our life at that time. Can I just hold hold one second, Mister Cat? Fucking the Red Dwarf. Wait one second. This is a lineage story between then and now. This it, when I think of Danny, I think of like all these different characters. But you have the funk in all of it. You are the funk. You no, are no, the spaceship the song man. Goes, we love the funk. Get him off the funk. Ow. We need the funk. Get him off the funk. You embodied that. You've uh, and I think about it now think with all your it. characters that's and everything. Cat. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah. It's James Brown. It's Little Richard. It's Streaming Jay Hawkins. It's Chuck Berry. My it's, mind is blown. It, 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 it's Cab Calloway. It's Prince. It it's, is. It's Morris Day. It's Rick James, who I spent a, a night with in New York. It, we'll get to that. Shush. Be quiet. What? Be, me, Morris Day, and Rick James in a hotel room. This is Shut too up. much. This is too much. Shut up. <laughs> Having met him at the bar at Studio Fifty Four, shut up! Can't do it. I told you going this was on, going on going on to the to the, <laughs> to the <laughs> apartment and then on to his hotel room. Shut up! Oi. All oh, right, yeah. carry on, right, Keller. So, right, let's carry on, <laughs> Keller. We're the big talk, man. Them, yeah, we're right. the people with the big talk. Them, yeah. They're yeah. on the comments at the moment, no blowing the fuck up. I'm only you. giving you bullet points. I can't give you the whole stories, otherwise I'd I'd have to kill people. But you're originally from around here, aren't you? you I'm you, Labrador Grove, full yeah. and through, bro. Yeah, Power Square originally. Hold tight, right? And that Power Square is the epicenter of hip hop in London. Yeah. End of break dancing, graffiti. That's where the man. Another big uh, contingent, Bristol, mm. obviously. Wild Bunch, the wild Massive bunch. Attack, yeah. Giles Peterson, Nelly Hooper, Banksy. Everyone the dugout. Applause, I've please. been to the dugout in Bristol. Anyone from Bristol knows I've been to the dugout. Yeah? Okay. Let's talk Power Square from, from Power the time Square. you were there. Come, let's get into that. Because well, when, I, when, when, you, oh, when I was at Power Square, man, we're talking about, you know, um, <laughs> you're talking about the... the, the uh, um, uh, the black shirts, you know, Sir Oswald Mosley and the black shirts were still, you know, marching around Labrador Grove. Wow. You know, the British Nazis. Can you yeah. believe that? They, they were a Un- thing. Unthinkable. And they, the, 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 they had an office in Labrador Grove. They had an office in Labrador Grove. Yeah, wow. the, 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 um, I think it was called the White Defence League. That was in Labrador Grove. White Defence League, my ass. Yeah. Well, all of that was happening. You know, the race riots was just the, the race riots had just finished when I was I was born in 1960. The race riots were in the late 50s, so we mm. were still living in the after effects of that. And then that yeah. there were still Molotov cocktails going through people's windows in Labrador Grove. What you still had to watch where you walk, especially down Latimer Road. That was very for those of you that don't know what a Molotov cocktail. The history was. of Labrador Grove, right, is yeah. one of a slum. Seriously, right? there is no such place in. The wards of Kensington and Chelsea named Notting Hill. Notting Hill is a fallacy. There is no such ward in Kensington and Chelsea called Notting Hill. The only ward in Kensington and Chelsea with Notting in it is Notting Dale, which is the Latimer Road area, which was a, it was populated with pig farmers and potterers, hence the Pig and Whistle pub. Okay, now, Holland Park itself was a racetrack. It had, they put up an iron fence around that place to keep out the poor people from Nottingdale. So what they used to do, they used to go there and cut the fence and go and watch the races and then rob all the rich people when they were were up there. Hence, that's why the racetrack closed down and now it's Holland Park. It was meant to be the Ascot of London, you see. And if you go down to Notting Hill now, there is a wall that separates rich from poor in Nottingdale. You can research it yourself. It's still there. 
So if all of these people chatting about Labrook Grove, Portobello Road, and Aria Tati Tate, talk is cheap. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is king. Knowledge is king. Education is the key. A thousand percent. But just because you have the key, make sure you don't have the wrong keyhole. Mm. Do you feel like there's a... And with clearly there is a complete gap in history books where it comes to the the, the lineage between now yes, and then. Because what happens with an, a, a genre and an art is like everything else. All of our art is criminalized because they fear that. Mm. So what they do, they criminalize it first. Any music genre comes out, the first time that somebody even trips over the pavement. You it's violence. <laughs> it's the rat. It's the violence. <laughs> See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you criminalise it. But yeah, what yeah. happens, the moment you criminalise it, it becomes popular among white youth. Yes. Because they're rebels, just like us. They're just the same. They're rebels. They don't want to watch what mummy and daddy watch. They don't want to mm. wear what mummy and daddy mm. watch. So every time the older generation of English kids criminalise... A, a, a genre, it becomes more popular. Yeah, yeah. For instance, today, for instance, all I got to say is RD, a little white kid from Manchester mm. in the middle of the crime scene. How? Mm. Uh, now, why would you want your white kid to be involved in crime if it's so criminal? But when he makes a million pounds, all of a sudden he's my little boy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He's you my see what boy. I mean? The hypocrisy is real. And everybody that created the, the you know, foundation. Uh, you know what I said there? You missed the pun. The hypocrisy <laughs> is. Real. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I tell you, their man, their music man, better wake up early when they want to come and chat on this table, you know. But I tell you what, though, I was just thinking as you were saying it, like it's it's interesting, isn't it? How nowadays there could be a case in point that the industry know how to market that. They know how to market the criminal. They 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 they've seen it through decades. Okay. Uh, uh, let's take let's take the, the, the little. I think he was fifteen or sixteen. The, mm. the, the little kid that um, that Dave brought up on stage. Mm. Yeah, mm. yes. And all of a sudden, he's got a record. Yeah, deal. yeah. Ain't no he irony. ain't done nothing. He ain't been to no clubs. He ain't yeah. ducked a bottle. He ain't nah. run from a, a crew because nah. you're in the wrong yeah, manner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, yeah they yeah. ain't done none of that, right? So for me, that was a setup. Yeah, hundred percent. That was a setup without question. I don't care. I'm not eating that, and I respect the the the, the, the performer. But I also know there is a pressure from the industry mm. um, uh, uh, to, for people to, you know, get on board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. And so what happens, you see, is th the guys that, inverted commas, come from the hood, have got to try and stay in the hood. Yeah. That is the difficult part. Because... Because the industry's pulling them away. The and industry's they pulling rooting. them away. And they're pulling them away with a very strong team of horses called money. Yeah. Right? <laughs> And I don't care who you are, man. If you know you can just sit there and do that, by you, it, they don't say you have to say anything. You just have to not say anything. Mm. That's a difference. That's right. What they say to you is just keep the politics down and you can get another meal. Stay nice and, you know? nice so and neutral. I'm not saying that, that everybody um, goes in there consciously to do that. But you slowly get emulsified into Emulsified. It. Woo! Yeah. Um. Uh. Neutral, vanilla, middle of the road, nice and safe. That's why he's called one. Vanilla Ice. Yeah. That's why Jay Z, Beyonce, Drake, to the most part, and Stormzy and the likes, they don't get into politics. They barely get on socials. They stay very, very clean. Jay Z just put out his first Instagram post, and then he shut it down again, didn't he, or something like that? It's just why do? Yeah. But can you see the publicity he got out of that? Yeah. Yeah. He got worldwide publicity. By putting out one post, mm. every newspaper, every a newspaper, news mm. on the news on telly, mm. Jay Z has just posted on Instagram, news. and it's like someone said, you in the same breath you say, "Man has just landed on the moon." Yeah, come on, yeah, you know I mean the real topics suddenly the, move them out of the way. The great conjunction <laughs> happened on the twenty first of December two thousand and twenty, mm. and it mentions the great reset <laughs> boris johnson just mentioned exactly the same word the reset go check it out 21st of december the great conjunction they told you by then they said get on that spiritual journey now because there's a shit storm coming 
Two weeks after the Great Conjunction, Trump was gone. <gasps> yeah? Uh, what, what's the, what was the Great Conjunction? Talk to me. It's called the dawning of Aquarius, isn't it? That's right, and that is that the is spiritual sign of awakening. You see, and awake, what, that's, enlightenment. That, that's, enlightenment. that stuff only happens once every 600 years, and it happened on the 21st of December, and everybody was warned. It says a new world is beginning. You go and look it up. The Great Conjunction, 2020, 21st of December. Look what it says is going to happen to the world, and if you're not spiritually connected... You're going Get down with it. Yeah, so it's all about. I've learned. About, I know about this. I am aware yeah, of yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Because the, 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 you see, the thing about the people is the people get too wrapped up in isms and cults and trickery. You know, mm. I'm going to tell everybody now. Black Lives Matter is did as much good, right, as. Doll cards. You're still unemployed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah? You've mm -hmm. got a government mm -hmm. card that mm -hmm. tells you, mm -hmm. I'm unemployed. And that's why UB40 album was the greatest thing that come out of a British band yet. The album mm. cover was a UB40 card, a doll card. Legendary. Right? And 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 three of them men are dead now. Yeah, yeah. yeah? And th they were heroes in our day because every black youth had a doll card. Mm. And when that album came out, and you got to remember, these are white guys and black guys together. It said everything about our community yeah. in London. That's the real community. And again, it wound us up because they were from Birmingham. They weren't <laughs> even from London because we had Aswad. So we were royalty already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. West London had Aswad. Hold tight, Aswad. Right? Yes. Drummy was in my school, like primary school. He was the drummer in our band from West primary London, school. Jeez, yeah. Yeah. And, and all of that, yeah. So that I grew up around those guys, you know, Aswad. You know, that's that. Those were the people that I grew up with, and so Notting Hill was always an artistic place. Notting Hill Carnival, mm. that's, you know, oh. all everything that's anything up to do with London culture, UK culture. It, it, it's you know, people hated Labrick Grove because of it, because mm. it, it seemed like everything came out of Labrick Grove. Which it did artistically. Mm. Uh, Jimi Hendrix lived there. Yeah. John Lennon lived on Hedgegate Court. I mean, you, we could go on all day. Hawkwind. Peter Rackman, the notorious landlord of Notting Hill, mm. owned a thousand properties in Notting Hill. His henchman was Michael DeFreitas, i.e., Michael X. He worked for Rackman. Rackman's girlfriend was Mandy Rice Davis, of scandal fame. Christine Keeler. Mandy Rice Davis, cool girls. They were cool girls, mate. What are you talking about? Wow. Them guys were hanging around All Saints Road. They're, all of that stuff is baloney, what they're making in them movies. Mm. They said, well, what, what, so what were two white women doing in Labrick Grove down in the Shabines? What were they doing there? And they made movies about those girls, you know? And, it, it, you know, the, the story that's never been told is Lucky Gordon. He was from Labrick Grove. He's the guy that shot up the house. He was the guy that, 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 that was the reason the police went round there. He was the guy that basically opened the can of worms that the home secretary at the time, yeah, was diddling around in Labrick Grove with these two call girls. No way. <gasps> what do you want? That's the story of scandal. Wow. The home secretary, secretary was in the grove diddling around with Christine Keeler and Mandy Rice Davis. The apartment that Lucky Gordon shot up, that was one of Rackman's um, flats, isn't it? Because he was the girlfriend of... Damn! Rice. He used to drive around Labrick Grove in a, in a, in a, in a Rolls-Royce convertible with, with a private number plate. Peter Rackman was a Hungarian Jew that escaped from uh, a, a Nazi prisoner of war camp, right, by eating his own shit. So that's a guy you don't fuck around with. No, you don't fuck and around with. And that's why he was the notorious landlord of Notting Hill. And that's why they entered a new word in the dictionary called Rackmanism. See? You can't just, you know, you, you have to know what you're talking about. How or don't talk. And I've never opened up like this on any interview. Get in. Because you have to be there. Mm. 
the man is of that culture, isn't it? So, mm. you know, we, we, we're rapping on a different level. Yeah, this yeah. isn't the Radio Times. This isn't, you know, morning telly on the sofa. We every, can talk where, about what we want. Where everybody goes on the sofa. Everybody that knows them goes, What's, why is he talking like that? He, yeah. That's not him. Yeah. Yeah. Because he thinks he has to change his spots because he's on telly. Yeah. You know, you're trying to make everybody love him. Have you but, ever had that? Have you ever had that where you feel like completely compromised? Like, uh, uh, yeah, but my thing is I'm not going to be compromised. Mm. So if you, if, you, if you order shit, you eat shit. Mm. That's it. If you go in over your toes, you will remain over your toes for your career. You, that's a fact. <laughs> Elaborate on you're that. Only as strong, El El you're only as strong as the first contract you sign. And if that contract has you bent over your toes, you remain over your toes for the rest of your contract. Mm, five years or more. Whatever. I don't care how much advance they give you, it ain't yours. Mm. It is yours in a sense, but the tax man wants 40% straight away. And then you are. So that you see stuffed. what I mean? It ain't yours. Yeah. If I give you a million pound, you've got to give the tax man 40% of yeah. it. So how is a million pound yours? It's not yours. No. But you've already spent 600 grand, so yeah. you're already in debt. Looks good on the paper. Yeah. But you know, if I give you a million pound advance, you don't get paid until you pay that million pound back. So there you have it. You've got your million pound, right? You're already in. Technically, yeah. you've you, you technically forty percent of that four hundred grand is the tax man's. That's before you do your taxes, of course. So, if you go out and buy a hundred grand Merc, a five hundred pound apartment, that's six hundred grand plus the four four hundred the owed a tax man. So you're already in debt, but you're you look like you're flossing. As you go along and then the tax man says, I want my money, that could be two years later where he actually says, I want actually mm -hmm. want my money. Mm -hmm. You better have his money. Mm. That shit's seasonal, doesn't last forever. Right, so it's better you sell your CDs out of the back of your car because you'll make more money mm. than being, you know, like underneath a record company for five years. You know, you, you, only, you only make something of yourself if you sell... A lot of records. Mm. And I mean, you've got to be selling millions to really make money. It's funny you say that because people do drown in their desires a little bit and they do chase after certain um, validation. I went did this Westminster College talk. Um, big up Westminster College crew for those of you who don't know. Big, big, big uh, university in, um, in London. And uh, I was there talking to them and I got off the stage and I was talking to the teachers and the mediators and whatnot. Mm. And they were like, you won't believe it, these music kids even now at 18 19 years old they still search for that a and r validation exactly mad isn't it whereas that will come you have to create you have to create a mood mm. people have moods the mood that people are in now sentimentality don't come into it mm. people want some anger They're pissed off well that's what the world is right now people don't want to hear you know, uh, you know, you need love, baby. I need love, baby. See? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's a bit hard to listen to Luther at the moment, isn't it? I, I do on a Saturday. I'm not going to lie. Well, but that's Just to I'm get my head out of the bullshit. Yeah, because that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's medicine to you. Yeah. The um, Power Square era and the collective, the, el the, the aspect of togetherness. Just, yeah. Just going back to the... To the storms analogy with the kid that kind of just jumps on board and just almost fast yeah. tracks his way. Like there They're was a there fast was... tracking people into the into the and you know these guys. What you got to remember that little kid he probably got financed up to his eyeballs. Mm. Whether he had a hit or not, he's going to walk away with a bag of change and he hasn't even left school. He hasn't even left school. He's got. Man. He's going to have a million pound in the bank and he ain't even left school. So, you know, because those Whoa, guys, those yeah. guys' deals that they're going to give them is different to the street guy that you've been, mm. you know, haranguing in the, in, in the, in the, in the negotiation room. Because mm. you know that street kid, his contract's going to be, you know, like a sieve. That's yeah. just going to leak water. Because he's not... He doesn't know yeah, anything. Yeah, he don't know nothing. Even if he's got a young manager, he ain't experienced... That. Man, yeah. someone like John Reed, Elton John's manager, would, would he, he'd have you working it. for him, it. emptying the yeah, beans yeah, yeah, and yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. You know? So it, it, it's who you know and it's who you've got behind you. If they respect the person behind you, you'll get everything you want. So, for instance, if you're with Simon Cowell, say, you, say, you've got, say you're signed by Simon Cowell. Mm. 
whatever record deal you sign is going to have zeros at the end of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, what you, de- what you can tend to find is no matter what, they, yeah, of course they've got money, but I can guarantee you now, peel back the banana called Leona Lewis and all you've got, oh. there, all you've got there is pure frustration. Yeah, yeah. Because to me, one, one, I'll tell you what, the thing about Leona Lewis is the fact that Leona Lewis became a star because of Simon Cowell and because she was allowed to participate in one of the biggest shows on telly. Yeah. My question is, because Leona Lewis was working with... Um, she did the Snow Patrol band. She thing. was with, um, you know, the guys that did um, My Boy. Um, oh, um, oh, from what's Bush. His name? Yeah, yeah. The man um, from Bush, Craig, Craig, uh, and Mikey, Mikey Craig's um, family. One of them guys, oh. Mikey Craig, the bass player from yeah. from Culture Club. That's right. Right, Mikey Craig's from Hammersmith, around the corner from the Hammersmith right. Odeon. I used to rave in Hammersmith Odeon with Mikey and his big brother Craig. So they were working together with his big brother Craig was in um, um, Funkapolitan. Mm, he was a DJ, his right. brother, Mikey okay. Craig. Mikey was a welder. And then Boy, um, and Boy George, culture club, mm-hmm. bass player. First time I saw Boy George was at the first real rap club, Language Lab, which was above at Gossips. Oh, That's shit. That's the first place I saw no way. Boy George. Wow. Yeah, in a, in a rap club. Talk to you about Leona Lewis, because I want to get into that as no, well. Le- well, Leona Lewis, right, you've got to ask yourself, everybody in the country, mm. everybody, oh, even Granny Smith down. Oh, Leona Lewis, what a voice. Oh, incredible. Oh, 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 So why couldn't she get a record deal when she was hawking around her demos? Yeah, that's right. Because she was with Man on Road them day. As soon as you put Simon Cowell in the mix, she's the biggest star in the world. But mm. not when she's got them brothers behind her. Yeah, yeah. You see? But the voice is the same. So there you have it. That is it in a nutshell. Hypocrisy in a, on a grand that scale. same talent could not get signed hmm. because obviously you didn't have the right people around you. And well, I'd say this as well, like in 2020s, whenever you're listening to this and watching this, there is, is a, it's not easy for young people to go that distance. And if you can operate and get into those right spaces and places, then all power yeah. to you. Power Square back in the day, there was a level of incubation, wasn't there, where you'd have like a crew, a collective, a, a scene. Yeah, a all of those young guys, Drew and Flex and mm. all the young guys. You got to remember back in the day, Power Square, that's where Queen Latifah was hanging out mm. with Moni Love and them. And Bambata. All of them guys used to come into the Grove. I saw Bambata a million times. Any time they was mm. here, I was there. Big up. Scam, by the way. Hold tight, scam. Scam, right? You know, you know scam, right? Mm-hmm. Right, them man, they, right. When I was in Starlight Express in 1984, right, them man from Grove, Drew and all them man, they came and graffitied my dressing room at the Victoria Palace Theatre. My whole dressing room was graffitied by the man from Labour Grove. Nah. Mad. Next what did Starlight like, what, did, <laughs> what did Starlight Express say about they loved it? They couldn't do shit. Yeah, it's all right. They couldn't do shit. The power, Danny. I was come choking on, on air, 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 aerosol for days. Yeah. The two men that was in the dressing room with me, they didn't know what was going on, what the... F- <laughs> but you know what? Then Jeffrey Daniel, you know, he was into his Japanese art. Mm-hmm. In his dressing room, he had a Japanese artist come in and do his. Fuck me, you should have seen it. Dead trendy. Jeffrey Daniel, the guy who taught Michael Jackson the moonwalk. That's insane. And he did you get into Starlight he, Express? He co- he co- How did that even happen? Well, I was into musical theatre, wasn't I? Starlight Express was my third West End show. Third, okay, yeah. so you'd worked your ra- up the ranks and you got to Starlight Express. Well, I, you... I auditioned like everybody else. You just kept it, kept it moving. I just auditioned, kept, move, kept it moving. Yeah. Where's that? Where does the ambition lie with? Where's this tenacity and drive and like? Because it still it doesn't seem like it's, it ever left, ever goes anywhere. You're you, tomorrow you're going to Glasgow. Next day you're going da da da. You're, like you're getting. I'm going to the, the motorcycle Grand Prix four days in Valencia for the final race. R- Valentino Rossi's last race in. The, the Don, the GOAT, seven world championships. First saw him riding when he was 15 years old. And I've met him many times. I go to Valencia every year for the final race because I like motorcycles. I ride one in Death in Paradise. I've mm-hmm. been all over the world on a motorcycle. I rode a motorcycle to the Gambia, Senegal, Iraq, 
It's Libya, Syria, Mauritania, Morocco. I've been everywhere on a bike. Slovenia. Favourite bike? Um, my R1. Yeah? I got two. They're gone. Both pink. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Anyone that knows bikes, Slovenia. the Big Bang version, yeah? <laughs> I, rode, I, rode my, I rode my R1 around the parade lap um, of, of the Isle of Man TT. I've ridden around Brands Hatch. I've ridden around Donington. I've ridden around um, the Valencia circuit in Spain. I've ridden around the Bruno circuit in, in, in the Czech Republic. In fact, I've ridden around that in, a, in, in the owner's E-type. How long have you been riding bikes? About 25 years. There's a singular sentence. There's, there's an... I had the very the... first R1, the original R1. Anyone that knows that bike will tell you, that's the beast of the East, bro. Mm, 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 mm. And you know, Japan, you could only get red and... Anyone that know about bikes, especially brothers, you could only get um, red or blue. I refused to have either. I told the guy, that bike better not come out of that garage unless it's black. And that's what it was. I had the first non-blue or, or, or red R1. Black, the very first model. See what I mean? Because guess what? <laughs> All right. Trivia, right? <laughs> My trivia, I kill our trivia. Go on. What was the predecessor... What was the bike called? And you'll understand why I got an R1. The predecessor to the R1 was called the Thundercat. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Now, this is for true. This is real. When I got to the Yamaha Museum in Japan, that's a whole other show about how I got there. <laughs> I'm, I'm the, the, the curator of the museum is taking me around I'm with my mum as well mm -hmm. and so obviously my first question is where's the Thundercat you know what he said to me we haven't got one of those what I'm in the Japan I'm in the Japanese museum yeah. in Japan yeah, in yeah. Yamaha's museum yeah and I said to the guy Where's the Thundercat? Yes, we ain't got one of them. Now, my partner, who I, who basically does all the clerical side of my career, and mm. and who I, who, who's my partner in making the motorbike uh, TV shows that we do. And no sooner had I told him that story, he told me. He said, well, "My partner, he's 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 the third generation, the first Yamaha uh, dealership in the United Kingdom." His, his grandfather was a TT racer and his father was a TT racer and, and has a, a, a racing school called Fab Racing. Mm. So if you want to get to the highest levels of motorcycle racing, i.e. The, the MotoGP Grand Prix, you have to go, if you're in England, you have to go to his school. That's who they suggest you go to. <laughs> right, so obviously, yeah, Yamaha dealers. He said to me, I just sold literally a brand new Thundercat that had like, not even 100 miles on the clock. So rare, it's basically rare, rare. a brand new bike from 20, yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah. Mad. And he said, yeah, I just sold it. I couldn't believe it. And they never even had one in the, the, Japan, the, the, the Yamaha Museum. That would Japan. totally affect my, my whole trip. Yeah. But <laughs> like, that's, what, the power of, to Japan for? that's the power of Red Dwarf. <laughs> Through yeah. the power of Red Dwarf, I got to visit Arai Helmets in, in Japan and I got to visit Yamaha. Um... Arai helmets are pretty much the crash helmet, and if you know, they make the um, they make the um, they make Lewis Hamilton's crash helmet. Mm -hmm. And my crash helmet, my bespoke cat crash helmet, of which I have two. I know uh, there's a picture of me in the museum there. Stop it! Yeah, there's a picture of me in the in the museum in Arai helmets. I went to the CEO's office and had tea with him in Japan, yeah, the, the governor, the big boss, Mr. Arai himself. I just feel like a constant, it's, it's like ever-evolving doors of conversation where it's just like loads, Man, you of, can't, loads you, of toys you, fall out of the yeah, fucking door and I've got to try and, okay, every, let me try and do... Sentence, you can't. You have, <laughs> I can't, it's too much. You, you can't do it, it's impossible. It's impossible. You ain't the first person that's tried to do it. It's like, whoa, there's Mate, a whoa. You, you ain't even scratching a pimple right now. <laughs> Let's talk about the DJing. Yeah, come on. Right, so DJing. We're talking about 1980, 
three, four no. earlier. Eighty two. No, eighty two was when I eighty two was when I met Grandmaster Flash. Right. Talk to me about the first set of DJs that were ever purchased. The per first pair pair of Technics. Somewhere. Right. The first pair of Technics right. ever purchased. If anybody can remember a, a DJ, and I'm not talking about a nightclub, right? Because I can tell you. The only nightclub I know for sure who had Techniques 1200s at that time was Annabelle's, which is the, probably the wealthiest club in, in London. The only reason Annabelle's had them was because it's the only club, it was the only club that had a Richard Long sound system. Now, Richard Long was the legendary sound system builder who built the two best sound systems in the world. The Paradise Garage and Studio 54. There you go. I knew Richard Long personally. <laughs> yeah? My, my, <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> my Bozak mixer, which was the first one I had, was the old mixer from Studio 54. I've got the receipt still, from Richard Long Associates. If you look up Richard Long, you'll see. Um, and, that's the first time I went to the Paradise Garage was in 1982, Larry Levan. I heard Larry Levan play in 1982. So when all Pete Tong and all them had started hearing them and I'd already seen him live. Mm. At the Paradise with Francois, uh, Francois Keravorkin and Larry Levan, Jelly Bean Benitez. I hung out with Jelly Bean Benitez in New York. You know, um, I went to the Paradise Garage twice. I went to Studio 54 twice. I went to the... Well, Studio 54, like... For the for the for the young as me, uh, I'd Studio Fifty Four. It is what it is. It was the place of um, high end debauchery, H hedonism, and hedonism, just... bohemia, yeah. all of that stuff. You know, what you had, you had people who could literally be nobodies. Meaning, I, I'm not a big rich person, but you have a personality. You'll get in before yeah. the rich guy. See, because they want personalities. That's cool as fuck. Because money weren't yeah. no nothing. Who cares if you got money? I got Mick Jagger in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Jackson. Yeah, that's who was going to that club. You better come with a good outfit, or you're out. A outfit, a good outfit might get you left outside. I mean, I mean, I'm talking outrageous about outrageous, outrageous. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, you got you got to be. What, the feeling of walking through that red rope at Studio Fifty Four after all the hype you heard was just like, holy shit! Mm. I'm in Studio Fifty Four, so <laughs> you know. It was funny because that night I, I went to the bar and I was like, I'm standing at the bar. I'm waiting ages for a drink. I'm just dying for a beer, like just a simple beer. And I seemed, seemed to be like, oh my God, 15 minutes. Anyway, I got the drink. You know that one? And he went, oh God, yes. I turned around, leant against the bar and had that first swig. Mm. Um, I turned around and Rick James was standing next to me. I just can't get over this. I never left him till about 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. What was he like as a character? Oh, God. Yeah. No. That, that's the guy, innit? I'm Rick James, bitch. Yeah, he's the, 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 I'm he's Rick the prototype James. to what became the, the, the cat that was the conduit to everyone's... Well, look, look. He, his, his, his rhythm track was one of the biggest um, dance songs mm. ever, which was, you know, can't touch this. But mm. unfortunately, Hammer didn't get permission to use his, his, his sample. So and he ended, up having to pay, he ended up having to pay um, Rick James about five million quid, which, which he immediately went and smoked on crack. Yeah, that's a fucking shame. And then ended up, you know, holed mm. up in a house with some girl and went to jail mm. and died a miserable death. Yeah, really you know? did. A junkie. Mm. And, you know, I think back to that day. I won't go into details, but it's not really surprising. Really? Man, I'm sitting there with him and Rick James arguing about who's the best with Morris Day. Because <laughs> Morris Day was huge at that time. He had the Oak Tree album out. Mm -mm. So Morris was bopping like, what's up, Rick? When was your last hit? Yo. You know? You know? And it was all like that. <laughs> It was like that. <laughs> Mind blowing. Because it was, what, 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 you know, and I, I, I met him again in London, in fact, and I met him twice in New York. I met him twice in New York and once in London. And each time was each just time like... I remembered. Of course you have to remember. Yeah. I'm in a limousine with 11 people, right, going from, um, <laughs> going from uh, um, Studio 54 to the, to the owner's apartment. 
in the penthouse. I'm mm-hmm. up in it with Rick James and there, and then from there, we went back to his hotel room, and that was me, Rick, and someone else. And then there was a knock on the door, and Morris Day came in, and I I was there all night, and I I left about ten in the morning just listening to these guys, you know. Wow. Well, because Morris Day, you can look at him, you can see the cat in him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You see him? If you see him, you see Cat Williams. If he, why is he called Cat Williams? I don't know. No. But he does look like the cat. He does. <laughs> but his name's Cat Williams with a K. Uh, um, and, and I said, all of those references, I, I consciously made an, a reference to that because, you know, if you look at the cat's pink suit, that's Little Richard. Mm-hmm. Oh, lovely Little, little Richard. Little Richard, man. Hey, Prince, I had a pink Cadillac before you were born. First rock and roller, without question. Chuck well, Berry, maybe, but... Well, no. well it doesn't... Uh, mate, Little Richard is the real McCoy, trust me. Mm. If you don't believe me, try and sing one of his songs. It's impossible. You, it's just a whole nother... Got a girl named Daisy. She almost drives me crazy. Got a girl named Daisy. She almost drives me crazy. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. But it's octaves, it's levels. See, you can't just get up and nah, do that. you can't. There ain't no Mickey Mouse. You can't go and fake that. Yeah? Now you can just get up there and go, It's easy, isn't it? But, no, it, everything has its place. Mm. And it's time. But you love people. And it's time. You love people, but uh, yeah, it's time as well. Yeah, it's true. Now you you seem like your receptors are on a lot, and you must you you love people, but you must feel quite challenged by by some by of the, the mediocrity around yes, you. Yes, exactly. Yeah, of course, and that's what it is. But you can't tell people they're mediocre, because at the same time as hating mediocrity, if you say that to someone, you could literally hamstring the drive that they had thinking that they could make it. Mm. And it's not about making it. It's about thinking you can make it. Mm. If you don't think you can make it, you ain't going to make it. Yeah. And so you mustn't ruin someone else's, um, you know, drive. Because if you turn around to someone who thinks they're good and and uh, on it and, and, you know, and mm. going down there thinking that they're going to make it, if you turn around to them and they respect your opinion and you say, well, you know what, you're mediocre. Mm. That's him done. Yeah. Because he respects yeah. your opinion. And so if you are a big star and you say that to someone, that's going to kill them. Yeah. Because, you know, you, you, they now go, oh, so what's the point of doing it? I'm not going to make it. Mm. And how many people have been told that you'll never make it? Mm. Oh, yeah, go get it. One second, guys. Here we go. I'm going up to Scotland tomorrow to do the celebrity Christmas special mm. of The Weakest Link. So you see... Business, mm. yeah, mm-hmm. pleasure, mm-hmm. business. And everybody know, any smart man, business before pleasure. I, and I, I that's take it not as a, a put down on Mr. Keller. <laughs> it's business before pleasure. Me and Killer Keller. <laughs> I hear stories about um, Red Dwarf and the parties that you guys used to have, like going up in Man- to Manchester and having yeah, like, yeah, proper yeah, yeah. Parties. We used to fly to Manchester in like the mid eighties when when them ballers talk about them driving around in Cortinas. We were flying to Manchester. That's real balling in the nineteen eighties. You know, a car come pick you up from your yard, take you to the airport, get on a plane, fly to Manchester, car take you to the hotel, from there it's get a car take you to the studio. That's how I was rolling in nineteen eighty seven. So when a man's talking about balling, I'm like, okay, yeah. It's mad to think. It's mad to think how in, ingrained in like the British society Red Dwarf is, and yeah. the kind of the almost like the folklore behind it. That's the crazy bit. Like people want to know, like, what are the parties like? Who disliked who? Who liked another person? Yeah, yeah. Why do, is there so much folklore in there? Yeah, because they can't read it. Joe Public, you know, has been. Yeah. watered down <laughs> to the point where they can't think for themselves. Mm. They are being told what to think every day mm. by um, by morons mm. in tabloid um, uh, um, pa- newspapers, in the morning sofas. Man, stop watching morning telly. Mm. 
stop watching that junk, Love Island and all of that shite, mm. yeah? I can't believe that people from the hood are into that garbage. Yeah, yeah. What is wrong with them? You are becoming everything that made you down there. Mm. It's almost desanitized. It's okay it's to do that. It's desanitized them to the point where, you know, when you think you're moving forward, but you're actually dancing backwards. Mm. As Louis Farrakhan says, you're dancing back into slavery. Yeah, but in a different you're, form of slavery. You're, 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 mm. you're cutting and tanning and pushing and nipping back to slavery. Mm. You're becoming everything they said you weren't. And were frightened to be natural. Mm. The whole thing about them, yeah? You've become mm. exactly what they wanted you to become. Mm. A poor version of them. Mm. They don't have to go to hairdresser to get their long blonde hair hanging down with the centre part in. They don't have to, um, you know, mm. have extra... Um, a aiding and abetting of bottom mm. or this or that or boobs you know mate I love the fact that that European girls ended up going to plastic surgeons to have their bums formed like black women <laughs> and black women went and had their bums formed yeah it's no, a lot no, of wrong muscles. Am I going mad here? <laughs> Have you already got a black bottom? <laughs> yeah. So why are you making you... it look like a black bottom? Tighten You've already it more. got a black bottom. It's just not good enough. Nothing's Did good enough. Did you know the black bottom was a dance? Yeah? Didn't you know that? Nah. Yeah, look it up. I the will. Black, the black bottom. Why they, do even, we th they even named the dance after their bottom. The black bottom is a famous dance why do they, from why the jazz do, era. But why do we think that it's not enough? There's never enough. No, because you've been brainwashed, isn't it? Yeah. That's what it is. You've been reading the sun. Mm. You've been watching morning TV. Yes. And that's why I said, to you, don't watch that shit. Right. And I'm in the industry. Mm. That pays my bread and butter. There's nothing more that an artist wants to get on the sofa, mm. right? And promote his wares. That's where they have you. They, you. they know if you come on the sofa, you get to speak to the world. And that's what everybody wants. But at what cost? Mm. Can you keep your credibility after selling your soul? No. Can you keep your friend's loyalty after selling your soul? No. That's why you always have beef mm. in, in, in road. Mm. Because... A, one guy doesn't like the fact that one guy's made it out of the crew, yeah, you know, like or it. out of that particular club. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it becomes beef within, you see. But when you had nothing, you were all one unit. It's true. Yeah? <sighs> money is the great divider. Yeah. And everybody's got money on their mind instead of art. And on their when mind. they want, when they got money, they want everything, don't they? They want everything. I got to go and deliver a PCR um, kit to. <laughs> yes, you Acton. do. Kill or kill. More, more, yeah. more, more. Don't worry. Any detractors, I'm quite willing to come and answer your questions. <laughs> Anyone who does, who, who wants to come and 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 square off, right about it, or come and tell me how wrong I am. Or how great you are, or how right you are about this genre. Yeah, I'm willing to have that chat with anybody. And trust me, he is always open for a conversation. This won't be the last time you'll be seeing Danny John Jules. I'll tell you something for nothing. It's been a fucking pleasure. Thank well, you. Well, hold so... on. It's been a long time before I blew my own trumpet, and rightly so. You, know, time is nigh. You know, and you know that's why it is, isn't it? It's Miles Davis. It's time to blow your own trumpet. That's right. The lineage of, and and the details in which you've you've the, the tapestry of your life and career i don't know where you get the the, the the it's like a sponge of information it's bonkers that's why that's um that's why my one man shows about sammy davis jr because that's exactly what he was and so when you have inspiration and influences like that you go down that road and as i said to people that was my focus sammy davis jr the greatest entertainer that ever lived mm -hmm. that's who i wanted to look up amen. to amen and so you're not getting no mediocrity from sammy right mm. Sammy was in the middle. He, that's why his nickname was the kid in the middle. He was in the middle of two communities. Both hated him. Mm. But when, but you know, if Tammy Davis Jr. went out in front of a black audience, right, doing a, a doing a, a a charity event for Jesse Jackson, and the black people booed him. Mm. He sang one song, 
and they gave him a stand innovation in tears. Go and look at it. It's online. There you go. It's called... It was, it was, the album was produced by Quincy Jones and it was, uh, it, it was um, on Motown Records. Motown Records, it was put out. And go and listen to Sammy Davis Jr. singing um, I've Got to Be Me, right? They were booing him. And he said to them, he said, disagree with my politics, but I will not have anybody tell me that I'm not black. Mm. Yeah? And then he proceeds to sing this song called I've Got to Be Me. <sighs> wow. You know? Dum, da, da, dum, 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 da, da, dum, 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 dum. You got to imagine, you got pure 70s Afro black rads in there. Hate in his guts. By the end of that song, they gave him a stand innovation. That is power. Power. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, whether I find a place in this world or never belong, I gotta be me, I gotta be me. What else can I be but what I am? I wanna live, not merely survive. And I won't give up this dream of life that keeps me alive. I've got to be me. I've got to be me. What else can I be makes me what I am? That far away prize. A world of success is waiting for me if I heed the call. I won't settle down, I won't settle for less As long as there's a chance that I can have it all I'll go it alone, if that's how it must be I can't be right for somebody else if I'm not right for me. I gotta be free. I gotta be free. Daring to try to do it or die. I gotta be me. I'll go it alone. If that's how it must be, I can't be right for somebody else if I'm not right for me. I gotta be free, I just gotta be free, daring to try to do it or die. I've got to be warm for that last note though. And, but it's a high, it's a high top C at the end. Uh, up there, but obviously I ain't gonna warm up. It's ten o'clock in the morning. Out. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast. <laughs> Danny John Jules inside the place. You know what to do. Sharing, caring, all that business. If you love Danny, give him a heads up. He's always around to take your conversations. Stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Stay true. Peace. <laughs> 